This week's player I tip, talkbacks. Because out of reading, players usually are expected to do a talkback with the audience, and if you can't talk about your play and it gets awkward, you... Ah, talkbacks. Uh, there's a part of me that believes that the reason players want to go straight to production is that um, you're not required to do a talkback after opening night. <laughs> With readings, usually you have to do a kind of talkback. Uh, engage the audience, get their feedback, tell them a little more about the play, get a little feedback from them and how they felt about it. Now, my graduate school, Holland University, we do something that's adapted off of the Liz Lerman technique of critiquing, where essentially the audience... Uh, gives all of their feedback, good positive, uh, good positive stuff and the negative negative stuff and you know any questions they might have to the playwright and the playwright is not allowed to respond. Basically it's not really a talk back at first but more the audience throwing things at the playwright so the playwright can process that and then the discussion happens. But I'm finding in most situations with readings, in most theaters, um, the talk back involves the playwright actually talking which can be a problem if you're the kind of playwright who is not really good in social situations. This week I came to the conclusion that to be a successful playwright you have to have a certain level of self-confidence and self-esteem that's like up here, you know, and down here is succeeding on a job interview, and down here is uh, picking up women in a bar. Given my success with these two, ah, this one's a bit of a challenge for me. But a talkback is easy to get through if you have a general idea of what you want to talk about within the talkback. The number one thing that you're going to be asked at every single reading is, so what inspired the play? Now, you could talk about a million things that inspired the play. There could be a dozen things that come at you, but you want to think ahead before the reading of what you want to say to answer this question. What did inspire the play? You could say a single event. You can say a single emotion, an inspiration from a person, a conversation. You can pick one line of dialogue that really sticks out in the entire play and say what inspired that. Find, pick something, one thing to say on what inspired the play because you can go for, probably can go for hours talking about what inspired the play and the multiple number of things in it. Keep it simple, keep it short. I believe that is the major tip here with that. The second thing to keep in mind with readings is that when you're doing the talk back and you're talking about your script and you want to get that feedback from the audience, what's good, what's bad, what could be done to improve the play, it's going to take the audience a while, especially if they're not an audience of theater professionals who have done these readings a millions of times. You, what you want to do is to focus on a particular thing and ask the audience that. Actually, here's what you do. Something you can do to get your audience moving is to ask your actors at the reading uh, particular things uh, about the particular character that they play, about a particular scene of the thing. Ask your actors or the director, if you have one, about something that they were closely involved with because usually the readers know the script better than the audience that just saw it so they're going to have more questions they've had more time to think about it and that'll get the conversation rolling the third thing you should keep in mind with talkbacks is that when people give you negative feedback and this is very important this is for everything when people give you negative feedback find something worth listening to even if you disagree with them completely Find something you like about that opinion because they came up with that opinion somehow for some reason and there's got to be a kernel of truth behind it. I'm the kind of playwright who thrives better off of negative feedback than positive feedback because I have that much self-esteem. Yeah. So I bring this up because this week I had my reading uh, of my play, The Alice of War 13, as part of the New Jersey Playwrights Contest, which was scary and exciting at the same time. My actors and the director only had two or three rehearsals with the script, so they didn't have that much time, and going into tech, it was daunting a little bit. And I say tech because it wasn't typical reading. There were some, you know, theatrical elements involved, sound stuff. I actually did sound design on my own play once again. Well, it's fun being a multi-talented playwright. I mean, going into the reading itself, it was actually very relieving. You know, I second-guess myself so much, so often, and to hear an audience laugh at certain lines and react at certain points. And you can... I'm one of those people who can feel when the audience is uncomfortable or when it's feeling tense and I'm watching the audience and you know there are points where it drew long because they started shifting in their seats and whatnot and there are points where they're really enjoying themselves and they were really engaged and I got those moments. It was awesome. And then came the talk back where I decided to become a blithering idiot. It's important to be passionate about talking about your play but um, limit yourself. Keep it short and sweet. I tried. I 
beg the audience to give me some kind of feedback. And I got the feedback I needed, which was the best part. I got exactly what I needed, and I kn knew going in the play needed some work. I knew that going in, you know, and it was a finalist in this contest against, you know, two other plays. I don't have word yet on whether or not it's going to get produced. Um, I would like to know if I won or lost. It'd be great to know. But it happened. I got the reading, I got the feedback, and that's the important part. You know, I can make the play better and submit it to the next thing. Well, that was it for this week as a writer. You know, usually at the end of this end of videos, I talk about what's coming next. So next coming up is, um... <sighs> Crap.